Last Thursday, I had a, a new camera lens day. I actually had two, and I want to discuss with you this one I just picked up, and that is the Nikkor. The Nikkor 85mm f1.4, which is pretty cool because this is the fastest lens that I've owned to date. And honestly, it's one I almost thought I wouldn't own because they're kind of hard to come across. They're not the cheapest in the world because of their aperture, but I picked this one out of Buffalo last Thursday is when I picked it up. And it was too good of a deal to pass up, to at least try. So I did try it. So I only got into the world of 85 millimeter lenses since last year. So I've had like a really limited run with 85 millimeter. And I have the newer version, which is the 85, the Nikkor 85 millimeter F 1.8 AFS which is a G lens, so that is full frame. I picked that up on a really good deal too. Apparently 85s, I find really good deals on only. <laughs> but it's an awesome lens and having an autofocus has been pretty cool, but I love this era of film gear. I've always shot the AIS to non-AI stuff. I've only owned one non-AI, but I've owned quite a few of the AIS lenses because they're super robust. I've had one fall off a car before and still work after that while I was moving, I'm saying. Um, they get dropped. I mean, I haven't dropped them, but other than that one. And I've had people kick them around an accident before when I've had them on the ground. So their assembly is really good on them. So I just really... I really enjoy how well they work and how hefty they are. They're pretty legit. So anyway, I'm going to cut through to the chase. So this one I bought knowing that there were some issues with it. And I kind of wanted to play with it and see what it was going to give me. So I don't know if you can tell or not. There is some scratching right in the center of the lens. There's a whole entire section of it. Trying to see if I can get a, a good reflection. And if you see through there, maybe you can. There is some scratching in this back element. And from my experience, everything I've ever been told, is if the rear element here has scratching on it, that typically means that the lens is pretty much junk. So the guy told me that he picked this lens up at an estate auction and it used to be used, this is a piece of tape that I was using to modify another lens. They were used to be, it used to be used at a newspaper in Ohio. And he didn't really know anything of the history beyond that. And that's how he got it. So it has all the scratching on the back and the front. My guess is what happened is they probably left the camera in the bag without caps on and it just got scratched. Which really sucks because it's a really nice lens. I mean, the rubber ring is a little bit out of the channel. It's a little bit expanded. But, you know, for something that's probably close to 40 years old at this point, I, don't quote me on the age, but a lot of them are from the 80s. Um, it's in really good shape. The aperture is nice and snappy. The focus is a little bit stiffer, but honestly, it doesn't bother me that much. And it's got a 72 millimeter filter thread on it. But anyway, I'm, I'm completely off topic right now. So I wanted to see how well it was going to work. The, the reference images that he included in the image on the sale didn't look too shabby. And, you know, it's kind of hard to not be sold on shallow depth of field, especially with like a 1.4. I mean, I guess the next step up would be like the one, uh, an F1.2. And the only lens I can get that as is essentially a 58 or a 55 or a 50. And I probably won't. I'm not really that big on that. I mean, I wouldn't say no to one if I got a good deal on it, but I'm not going on my way to find one. So well, that's scratching, especially in the back. I thought 
usually the images are really bad. And I've had a lens that has a whole entire front element baked in fungus, and I cleaned it, and it the only thing that happened to that one was it got soft and it was kind of irre irregular across the image of where it was soft. I mean, there was a pattern in all the images, but there were splotches of sharpness on the corner here and a little bit up here. The center was super soft. Kind of sucks to have a, da a damaged optic. So I got this one, and the images he sent me were not bad. And it came with the filter, or the also threaded cap for it and the rear cap and he included which i'm assuming is probably a newer lens hood for it and he said that he uses the lens hood to essentially add a little bit of contrast back because with such a large element it will flare and kind of haze a little bit on the image especially if you're shooting towards the light and Long story to be cut shorter, I've been testing this over the last few days and I'm honestly in love with this thing. The focal length is a really nice focal length. Everybody says it's such a great portrait length, which I would not disagree with. I had the 105, I still have it, and I thought that was great. And it's, they're both really good, they had their own uses. But I took some pictures of my bike, just natural light, I haven't done any flash work with it yet. I haven't gotten that equipment out yet. And shot some pictures of my bike and then to be put on Instagram for pink bike and stuff like that. And the images turned out really, 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 really nice. I did have to compensate with a little bit extra contrast, maybe dipping the black point down a little bit more for a little bit more contrast, but not anywhere near in the same realm as that 300 that was baked with fungus. Absolutely not. The 300, you definitely have to process a lot harder, a lot harsher than this thing. The images are a little bit soft, I noticed. They're not the sharpest images I've ever seen, especially at f1.4. Wide open will always give you the softest image. And really not bad, the color looks good. The sharpness is honestly really, really comparable, especially factoring when I paid for it. So, super nice, and it feels nice. Cosmetically, this is the stuff that I personally really like. And for the sharpening I added, if you use Lightroom, what I ended up using was 90 on the sharpening scale with a radius of 2.0, and I'm trying to think of what, oh, masking. I usually mask my sharpening so that it helps. My image doesn't add just grain to everywhere. And I, you, I almost always ride my masks pretty high so that it only highlights my subject. So it is a little bit higher up there on the sharpening scale, but honestly, they're really not too shabby. And once you cut it down, when you bring it down a few stops, it's really not that bad either. So just because it does have a scratch doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. Thankfully, these, sc these scratches in the back don't seem like they're super heavy. It looks like there's a bit of coating loss from the scratches, but really not too bad. So, I don't know. I figured I'd just kind of share that with you YouTube people, you know? And I did also notice with this that the aperture does have some oil. So that means that I'm probably going to have to service this lens at some point. Probably can't see it very well. If I close the aperture down, there's a bit of oil inside of there. But I have taken apart my 105 about three times, which is the same exact construction, I'm quite sure, as this one. Which means that you have to take the front off and go all the way back to the rear of the mount. Internal, internally to get the aperture ring off because my, my aperture ring seized up randomly when I was using it. So they're a little bit more of a pain in the ass, especially with the helix or the helicoil to align it correctly. But being that I do know how to, to fix these lenses a little bit, it's not the worst investment I've ever made. I'm sure I'll have to do some kind of maintenance on it at some point, but it's actually pretty cool, so 
thanks for checking it out, I guess. I don't know. Let me know if I should make some more of this stuff. I had to start shooting some cars with it soon. I haven't had the opportunity in the last, not even full week yet, to use this lens for it. So, I will make another video for the other ones I just acquired too. So, cool! Feel free to subscribe if you want to see stuff. I don't know. I have a lot of random stuff. Thank you. Bye-bye.